It is the largest power plant turbine in the world. Five meters high, 13 meters long. Weighing 450 tons. It never ceases to amaze me. Design, production and transport of this monster are a unique challenge for the entire team. When we get inside the ship, it'll get tight again. A ship had to be specially designed to transport this colossus. Can you give us some water? Despite weeks of preparation, the transport is an adventure. They should all help out a bit here instead of running off again. It takes over a year to produce this monster turbine. First of all, you have to manufacture the casing. Solid cast steel, several centimeters thick, each component weighing tons, developed to withstand enormous forces and incredible temperatures. In principle, the power station turbine works like an aircraft engine. Ambient air is compressed in several stages, then fuel is mixed and burned in the combustion chamber. The combustion gases set the turbine in motion and a generator converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy. In these dimensions, the gas turbine is a real machine from hell. The turbine blades reach almost the speed of sound and it's 1,500 degrees behind the combustion chamber. Only super alloys can survive this inferno permanently. This comes at a price. Each individual turbine blade costs as much as a mid-range car. In return, it delivers around 3,000 horsepower. Because there are enormous forces raging inside the machine, assembly is carried out with utmost precision, to nearly one hundredth of a millimeter. After more than 12 months of construction, the world's largest gas turbine is ready. Some gas turbines could fit into transport aircraft, for example the Antonov. But this large gas turbine, with a weight of almost 500 tons, just doesn't fit in there anymore. Ships are our only option now. 6 a.m. The Port of Berlin. The logistics crew gets the special ship Ursus ready for takeoff. Its specialty? So-called roll-on, roll-off transports which work without a crane. This is why the Ursus has a built-in ramp and a very special onboard vehicle. The 12-axle heavy-duty module can be remote controlled. Its hydraulics can compensate for unevenness. It is used to transport the gas turbine from the factory to the inland port. The nights are not so good. You didn't sleep too well? No. The distance the turbine has to travel by water is only a few kilometers long, but even transporting by ship has its pitfalls. The bridges cause problems. Beneath this one, the canal is very shallow, no more than 30 centimeters on the depth gauge. After a few minutes' drive, the huge loading ramp moves into view. The ship is anchored firmly to the shore here so that it doesn't sink under the weight of the giant turbine. Shipbuilding engineer Lichtfuß developed the unique transport concept. The challenge was that our customer produces a turbine that could no longer be transported by road. The Berlin port operator has spent 10 million euros on the special ship and the heavy-duty transporter. Without it, the world's largest gas turbine wouldn't be able to reach its customers. It is simply too heavy for normal Berlin roads and bridges. Then it's time for the 500-ton Colossus to set off on its journey. Now we're going into the hall. First, we'll drive the transport vehicle underneath the turbine. Then the turbine is loaded onto the vehicle. To do this, Frank Bunting has to position the low loader below the turbine with pinpoint accuracy. Only then is the weight perfectly distributed on the vehicle. Millimeter by millimeter, the heavy load is lowered. Ropes loose. Check all round if everything's okay. Even if it is only a few hundred meters to the water, they won't move an inch until the load is perfectly secured. 
Only then are 192 tyres, 12 axles and 500 tons set in motion. The giant gas turbine is destined for a power station in Turkey where it will provide electricity for 2 million people. When the ship arrives, the most critical part of the transport awaits the crew. All right, let's go. When we get inside the ship, things are going to get tight again. Vehicle width is 6 meters 30 and the ship's entrance is 7 meters, not much scope. We'll stop before we drive down. Due to the slope, there's a 12% gradient, so you have to make sure you drive steadily and not go too fast or too slow. You shouldn't brake abruptly, because the module will stop, but the turbine won't. Trying to park a 23-meter-long remote control transporter weighing 500 tons. Precision work. Right, let's get it down. I'm at 133. Well, take a look on the other side too, not that it's already on the tyre. Is it at the right height yet? No, not yet. Therefore, the ship has to be balanced with ballast water. First, we'll have to see how deep we might have to go to get under the bridge. The Ursus has to pass under two bridges to reach her destination, the inland port. Both pose problems. The first is very low. There is no more than 10 centimeters of space between the turbine and the bridge. We check the height to make sure we have enough space to pass under the low bridge. That's the first bridge after the mooring point. Wait, let's have another look. Hold on. That should be enough. But don't let any more water out now. It's good, you can go. Done. The giant turbine has cleared the first hurdle. But the problem for the next passage is not the height of the ship, but its draught. So we have to see how deep the ship's lying now, and if we can get through without any risk. Is there a hand's breadth or a hand's thickness under the keel? Only when the lock behind the next bridge is closed does the water dam up and the Ursus manages to get through without running aground. It's not routine with a thing this size. No, it's a meter higher than a normal turbine and 200 tons heavier as well. And of course, that's noticeable during transport. They're calling already. Lichtfuss, hello. Hello. Okay, I'll let you know when we're through. Okay, thanks, we can go through. The lock keeper gives the green light. And that's the second bridge done. Now the Ursus sets course for the harbour. But the next morning begins with a disappointment. There's a bit of a delay. The transporter has a slight defect, which we're now trying to repair. We can't afford long delays, because that would cause problems. If we're talking about several days here, then that's a very difficult issue, especially with mobile crane operations, because we've scheduled them so tightly. A single harbour crane cannot lift the enormous weight of the gas turbine. Only tandem lifts can. For this purpose, the port operator has hired the red mobile crane, which is also used to build wind turbines. Hiring costs alone are 100,000 euros. In the meantime, the transport team has repaired the transporter. With a delay of three hours, the turbine is driven to the harbour basin. It has been packed overnight to make it seaworthy. The barge Shir Khan is to take this monster to Rotterdam the very same day. Foreman Peter Bender now takes command. They should all help out a bit here instead of running off again. 
With such a huge load, nerves are starting to fray. Somebody help out over there. On the other side too. Climb up and move the rope further towards the middle. That way the rope's totally lopsided. It's completely useless. Only when the harbour crane's steel cables are secured to the turbine can the mobile crane position itself correctly and take its counterweight. He's currently building up the counterweight. We've about 150 tons of hanging counterweight and 100 tons of fixed counterweight. That's enough to balance the 200 ton load. Then, the serious business. The tandem lift of the world's largest gas turbine can begin. So, everybody ready now? Both together. Slowly up. Brake released. The brake's off. Both of you carry on slowly. You've got to keep going. So now, both up evenly. Go on, go on, slowly. That's nice and straight. Frank, slow down. Keep going, keep going. You, get away from the undercarriage. Frank, a bit further, 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 further. Lower it a bit more, both down. Everything goes according to plan, but suddenly... The red crane's too fast. Stop, hey, hey. The driver is lowering the weight too fast. The turbine is at risk of landing in a crook position. Frank, let it down a bit more. Just Frank, slowly. Go on. With a trained eye, the team has recognized and diffused the situation. Even more cautiously than before, the crane drivers lower the turbine into the belly of the ship, which sinks down considerably under the 500 tons. The turbine's in, it all went well, everything's fine. Next stop is Rotterdam. There the turbine will be loaded onto an ocean-going vessel and transported across the Mediterranean to its destination in Turkey.